Today I'm talking all about hosting a workshop in your space or hosting a workshop as the teacher in a space that is not yours. So if you're interested in either of those things, stay tuned. Hello there. If you're new to this channel, I'm Steph. My company is Pushal. I make handmade soaps and candles, bath salts, lip balms, all kinds of fun things. And on this channel, I like to discuss a lot of the behind the scenes of running a business like mine. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe so you get notified every time I release a new video. I am gonna try something today that I don't normally do, which is I'm gonna try and do this with as little editing needed as possible. Normally, there's a lot of filler words that I'm removing and a lot of pauses where I'm collecting my thoughts but I don't have a lot of time between filming this video and wanting to publish it. So I'm gonna try and make my editing job as easy as possible. Just know that this video might be a little bit more rough around the edges than my others because of that. So <laughs> that aside, I'm just gonna jump into today's topic, which is workshops. I have another video on candle making classes specifically where I go through all of the details of the candle making classes that I host, including pricing and scheduling and um, products that I use. So if that's specifically what you're looking for, that might be a good video to watch also. But this one is a little bit different. So I have a shared studio space. I have the front half of a one story building and the back half is uh, shared with my good friend who's a photographer. And this past week, we hosted our first workshop that a third party taught the material. So um, we wanted to do events like this because it not only expands the type of programming that both of us can host, it also introduces us to new audiences because whoever's teaching the topic shares it with their audience, obviously. And so it allows us to meet new people and introduce ourselves and what we do to them. And it's in a really fun way. You know, it's not the sort of like typical marketing. This is something that we actually like get to enjoy doing while we're also promoting our business. So a little more, a few more details on the type of workshop we hosted. Back in January, Chelsea, my studio mate, and I went to a natural dye workshop at a local restaurant slash boutique. Uh, the like front half is the restaurant and then the back half is a super cute boutique. Um, it's like a husband and wife that own both. And we signed up just because we thought it would be fun. It's the sort of thing that we would like to try and had a great time. The woman who led the workshop is a fashion designer who uses botanical materials to dye a lot of her fabrics. And so we made silk scarves and you, she goes through her whole spiel of like what botanical materials create which colors in the finished fabric. And it's not necessarily what you think. So it's kind of cool to have her talk through that. And then we made our scarves at the end you like shake them out and you see what pattern comes up. And it was just a blast. Like we had so much fun. And this was just after we had moved into this studio earlier this year. And we were sort of talking at this event, me and Chelsea, and like, we could do this. We could definitely host something like this. And so we approached her and she was a gem about it. Her name is Laura. And so we picked a time and she came by to the studio looked through sort of logistically if it would work and yeah we set this past date as our date and we promoted it and we filled 19 spots we had room for 20 people we only filled 19 but that was still a great turnout everyone showed up nobody had to cancel last minute and it went so well it basically went as well as any of us could have hoped and i thrilled with that obviously but i'm gonna talk through a little bit of why i think it went so well because if you're someone who has a space and you wanna host something like this, I think this could be helpful. But like I said at the beginning, if you are a candle maker or a bath bomb maker or any sort of other product and you are considering maybe reaching new people by teaching them how to make things at another location, you can get the perspective of the venue 
in terms of how you might want to set that up. <clears throat> so starting at the sort of very beginning in terms of the logistics of making this event work, obviously we had to have the right space. Uh, we have room, the back is Chelsea's photo studio. So it's a pretty open space. My space up here is pretty tight because it's filled with so many supplies and uh, products and it, we wouldn't have much room for very many people, especially not enough to make it worth it financially for any of us. And so once we knew that we could, we plotted out how many tables and chairs we could fit back there and we came up with 20 as a very comfortable number for the amount of people we could have in the space. So that allowed us to also brainstorm a little bit of the costs that would go along with that. We, Chelsea and I both already had enough tables and chairs, so we didn't have to worry about that. If you don't have those things, you'll have to consider what it'll cost to rent them. Or I don't know, maybe you could put out a call to your community for borrowing some if you don't want to uh, use have that expense. But it's just something you definitely want to keep in mind. Then our workshop host, Laura, told us how much she needs to charge in order to make the event worth it for her financially. And then she allowed us to add on an amount to that, to her number for the final price. So we were allowed to figure out what made sense for us in terms of what we wanted to make from the event. And then that's how we came up with the final price. So we know, knew going into it what our potential earnings were. Like if we sold all 20 spots, we would make X amount of money. Like I said, we only sold 19, but that's we basically <laughs> hit that number. And once we knew the potential amount that we were going to make, we could fill in those other budget items. Luckily for us, this was pretty simple. Like I said, we already had tables and chairs, so we didn't need to worry about that. We also had glassware for drinks, so we didn't have to rent any of that. And we did spend, really what we spent money on was um, refreshments. So the class started at about six o'clock. That's when people started to arrive. And we knew that that time, you know, we don't know if people have eaten dinner or not. So we wanted to have like pretty decent snacks out. And then also we provided wine and non-alcoholic beverages as well. So that was really our big budget item, which wasn't a ton, but knowing that we had that number in mind, we didn't have to uh, provide any other materials for the actual class. Laura took care of all of that. And we also had to consider what equipment or access to electricity she needed. Luckily we have lots of electricity and because I have a full kitchen in my half of the space, she needed to, the way that the fabric sets with the botanical items is through um, steam. She like steams them in a big metal pot. And so she just needed a heat source. Luckily I have a stove, which was, it made it so easy. But when she was at the restaurant, they obviously have a stove at the restaurant, but I don't think they're going to use food prep stoves for this kind of thing. So they had like a separate um, heating. What are those? You know what I mean, where you like plug it in, it's on the table hot. Why can't I think of the word? Of course, the video I'm not going to edit. I like completely blank on like a burner. You know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. So there's definitely alternatives. And again, that was just for this specific kind of class. If somebody were teaching like a paper goods thing, you probably wouldn't need a heat source. But those are the sorts of things that you really wanna make sure you have prepared if you're hosting someone, or if you are going to be teaching others how to make something, you need to be very specific with what you're gonna need access to to make, make it successful. If you are a candle maker, you're probably going to need to bring like your own Presto pot and you're going to want to make sure that there's a good place for you to set that, for you to pour the wax, whatever that is. So yeah, you just want to make sure that both parties know all of the items and all of the resources needed to have a successful class. The other thing that we wanted to make sure we were both in agreement on was the schedule of the class. So Laura knew about how long it took to present the educational aspect of it all. Like, how does this work? Why does it work this way? What plants 
result in what colors. And also she had done a few of these before, so she had an idea of how long it was gonna take people to make their actual scarf. And then she had to boil it, or sorry, steam it for about 30 minutes, I think, approximately 30 minutes. And then at the end of that, people just shake out the excess, like flower petals and stuff like that outside. And then that's all she needs. We did give ourselves about a half an hour in the beginning of the class period for people to arrive, get some snacks, chat amongst themselves. You definitely wanna leave that time in there. I think if you give yourself too tight of a schedule, you're gonna be stressed about moving on to the next thing too quickly. And you really don't want anyone to feel rushed, especially if they're paying a, a good amount of money for whatever class you're hosting or teaching. Just make sure that you give yourself some time so that it doesn't feel like let's move on to the next thing. So that was definitely another important thing is the schedule. And then you also just want to consider, especially when you're deciding on a price, what are the takeaways from the event? What is included in the price of whatever it is you're charging? So if you are teaching a candle making class off site, obviously their takeaway is a candle. If you want to charge a little bit more, what are some other, maybe there's like a goodie bag of your stuff that you also include. Um, you might wanna include take home instructions in case they wanna repeat the process. Laura printed out um, instructions to put at each place setting, which I think was great because sometimes people are, um, some people learn visually, others wanna like read it out and make sure, it just like covers a lot of bases to have that information in addition to your presentation. I also opened up the like shop part of my space while everything was steaming for 30 minutes. And I offered a 15% discount on anything that people bought while they were here for the night. So that's a little bit of a takeaway also is that you get a discount on products while you're shopping. So, you know, those are just some fun things I think to consider. It might be something that you want to work out with whoever's hosting you or like I said, if you're the host with, um, with the teacher and it's, it's fun, I think, to make it like a combined takeaway between the two businesses. It just makes it feel a little bit more collaborative and it's also good for your ROI that they're potentially taking home more information about you either way. Then the next big thing really is promoting it. So like I said, we had 20 spots available. We really wanted to fill all of them. And we didn't really want to spend money on promotion. Now, depending on what your market looks like, what your following looks like, what the other businesses following looks like, you may be able to get away with not paying for any promotion. It might just be word of mouth um, and social media promotion that's enough. And that might be something you want to factor in when you're approaching whomever you're working with is do they have the following to fill these spots or help us fill these spots without us spending money on promotion? Or if you know for sure you're gonna spend money on promotion, you might wanna increase the ticket price a little bit to cover those costs. Just something to think about from the beginning. We felt pretty confident that we weren't gonna to have to pay for promotion. With only 20 spots, we have like such a great network of friends, even just in this area that we knew would be interested in this type of class. And then Laura only does these classes like once a month. And so we knew that there were people that were interested in taking her class that once she posted it was here, they would buy a ticket simply because they've been waiting for an opportunity to do this. And there were definitely ticket sales from both of those categories. There were a couple of people uh, who we had never met. We didn't know how they found the event, which was really exciting. It's like a fun way to uh, just like feel like you're getting more out of putting in the effort to something like this because it was a decent amount of work to put all this together. And so we started promoting, I think like a month out from the class, we initially posted it. I put up the tickets on my website. I just created a page on, um, all right, I made it like a product on my Shopify page, uh, website. And so I hosted all of the signups. And so it was really easy to like share the link to the direct like 
ticket sales um, with both Laura and me and Chelsea. And so we started a month out. We didn't want to hammer it, <laughs> hammer it in too much because really a lot of things like this, people decide like a couple weeks out. You're going to have your people who have been waiting to do it that will buy tickets as soon as you post it a month away. And so that, that gives you like first little surge of sales. But then you also have to consider that this might be a kind of last minute thing that people decide to do. It's a weeknight is when we hosted it. So people might want to hold off and see what their week looks like. Don't get discouraged if you don't sell a bunch of tickets when you first announce it. I think really it's the two weeks before the event where we got most of our sales. And so keep in mind that like, again, these are decisions that people make sort of last minute. I We posted on social media, we emailed and texted our friends and I, we got a lot of signups just through that. We had one friend who had a bunch of her friends that I hadn't met yet um, that she just, she sent it out to everybody. She's great. We really should have, we should pay her a commission for the night because she really filled a lot of spots for us. But you might find like a group of friends that has been looking for like a fun outing for the evening and they all of a sudden take up half your spots. So I think that you just want to make sure you're, uh, promoting it fairly regularly, giving people a real idea of the takeaways. I, I mentioned earlier the takeaways from the event. Give people a really good idea of what the value of this class is. Share more information about who will be teaching it, whether it's you or someone that you're hosting. And what was nice for me and Chelsea is that we could speak from experience of we've taken this exact class that we're about to host and it was super fun. Here's what we loved about it. And so we were the first testimonial as we started promoting it. So I think like having a close relationship with whoever you're working with so that you can both speak to each other's strengths and why you're so excited about it. And, and yeah, so we, we had signups the day before, so we didn't fill the last, um, couple of spots until like the week of the event. So really keep in mind, a lot of this stuff happens last minute. And then last, really all there is to talk about is how I feel now post event about the success of it. What I think were the main like takeaways for me as a host and how we'll be doing this in the future. And clearly I had a blast. Like I think it was absolutely worth our time, worth our effort and worth the small investment that we made for refreshments. I think that this is something that we will definitely be doing in the future, especially as like a newer space and wanting people to be more aware of what we have going on here. For me, I'm a newer business. Chelsea's been around for, she's been taking photos for a long time, but she does a lot of weddings and she's also looking to introduce more brand work, more portrait work, which is part of uh, her reasoning for getting a studio space. And so it is nice for her to introduce more people to this space, people that maybe didn't realize she had it. So for both of us, it was really great in terms of exposing people to new things that were going on with our business, or in my case, a lot of people still don't know exactly what I do. So that alone was really great. We got a new audience that we were sort of introduced to by uh, Laura sharing this with her followers. And we also, for me, obviously, I also sold products this night. So we had money that we took home just from ticket sales. But I also took an additional revenue home from the people who bought products while they were here. So if you're someone who's also going to be selling products through the event, consider that uh, in terms of like your budget and what you're projecting to make from that event, that product sales should be included in that, which is really exciting. It definitely makes it feel even more worth it in the end. And really another thing that like, you can't necessarily put a monetary value on, but I really feel is invaluable, is that this helps you increase professional relationships. You know, the small business community here in Milwaukee is amazing. I'm hoping it is where you are too. 
But the more people that we do these sort of events with, it's such a bonding experience to both be uh, feeling the pressure of making the event a success, helping each other out. After everyone left, we all sort of were chit-chatting about how the evening went. We were all just like really excited about what a success it was. And I think it really strengthened our relationship with both Laura and her assistant, who's a local florist. And that, that sort of stuff that continues to grow your business in ways you might not even realize. And again, like I said, you can't put a price tag on how much those are worth. But really, I think especially if you're starting out, this is such a great way to um, to just like really build rapport with people that down the road, you never know what the opportunities are. I mean, this event was such, such a success that we could easily repeat this exact event at a different time of year, hopefully get different people. And now we've tested it and it's, it'll be much easier the second time around because that first time is all, you know, you're working out some kinks. But now knowing that the formula works, it's so much easier to replicate. And with me and Chelsea and this space, we absolutely want to bring other um, educators in to offer different kinds of classes. And this shows us that people are interested in attending those types of things. And it's really kind of like sky's the limit. It's really just limited by how creative you are in terms of what the class may be. So all around, like I said, absolute blast. I think, you know, the the hardest part is just the sort of anxiety of and, and pressure of will this go well? Will I fill the spots? Certainly there are going to be times where things don't sell as well as you want them to. So you also want to have in mind say we have 20 spots, what's the minimum number of people that you want there to make it worth it? For us, Laura had dictated that number. She knew already that I think it was eight. So if less than eight people sign up, we'll have to cancel. But luckily we didn't have that problem, but that's something you wanna keep in mind too. And don't get discouraged if that happens. It might be, it's really just feedback. Maybe your promotion didn't work the way that you wanted it to. Maybe you need to work paid promotion into your plan. Maybe the a time of day or like the day of the week was the wrong choice. Make sure you're checking other events in your area. Make sure you're not competing with anything. But yeah, I, I think it was thrilling that it went so well and we're really excited to see what other sort of things we can do with the space and working with other people. Yeah, so I, that's pretty much it. That's like a very obviously broad overview of what happened. And like I said, I'm, I'm hoping to have more of these and I'll share more with you guys about how they go in the future. I hope that this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me reach other viewers like you. And I hope to see you in the next video.